Well, hello. It's so, so good to have you with me today again. And I am really excited about this program because I know that within the sound of my voice, there is someone either you may be going through domestic violence or you know someone that's going through domestic violence. And I had the privilege back in November when I visited TBN, uh, Miss Cassandra Green was there. And we were both in the audience together to witness that new movie that uh, I think Sunday Morning Rapture. And uh, we had the privilege to sit next to each other and began talking about her ministry. And uh, so here you are. It's an appointment from the Lord God. And I am excited about what he has to say through you Amen. today with your experience. Amen. And um, Cassandra represents uh, WOW, which stands for Warriors of Worship and Warfare, mm -hmm. and WITNESS Ministries. Mm -hmm. And WITNESS stands for Women in Transition Needing Edifying, Stress-Free Surroundings. Yes, and so I want to welcome you to Thank our you program so today. Uh, I know that really since we saw each other back in November, you have lost a very dear close friend mm -hmm. of yours to domestic violence. Yes, I did. And uh, out of that even you called me again mm -hmm. to say, Diane, this is urgent. Mm -hmm. And so through some series of cancellations, mm -hmm. God brought, brought you right down divine here. Divine appointment. It's a divine appointment. A divine appointment. Yes. And so we know because of that appointment that we are going to minister to you today. And we want to talk about domestic violence. I mean, mm -hmm. I I shared with you a little bit last night, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't say that I was abused. I was not really, I don't guess, abused. I, and you may differ with that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I ran away from home and got married at 15. Mm -hmm. And I went through, my husband was, a, a good person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but because of his own childhood mm -hmm. and his own pain, mm -hmm. he was very controlling, mm -hmm. uh, very hot-headed, mm -hmm. and even though we didn't go through uh, much physical Physical's abuse or anything, mm -hmm. it was very controlled. It yes. was a very controlled environment, mm -hmm. very dominating, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's a form of abuse. That is a form of abuse. And so mm -hmm. I want so. you to talk about uh, Cassandra, what you actually, I mean, it could be the beginning even of abuse that yes. could end in a death if yes. we're not careful. And yes. I want you to talk to our, our viewers today about the statistics we were talking yes. about in Georgia yes. and all that stuff yes. last night. Yes. So. Just recently, uh, Georgia was found on a list of federally uh, released uh, statistics to be the sixth highest in the nation for death of women due to domestic violence. To me, that is absolutely unacceptable. Six in the nation. So we must, in Georgia, make a stand and take a stand and to bring awareness to the problem of domestic violence. There are three to four women killed in this country every day due to domestic violence. There are 1.3 mm. million, approximately 1.3 million are abused, women uh, abused in this country every year. Mm. So the statistics are staggering and until we decide, and I'm especially speaking to the church, until we do something because most of the women that are being abused are Christian women. Isn't that something? Christian women are being abused in their relationships. And we know that it's not just women, but 85% of the abused are women. Okay. 85% are women. So we know that there are men and children being abused, but the numbers are extremely too high across the board for everyone. This should not be taking place. Right. It should not be taking place. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. It's unbelievable. Now, what does your ministry, how, tell us a little bit about what you do. We do awareness more than anything else. And I personally, I, I have allowed women to come into my home as a safe house. In a safe house, whether you're doing it uh, through an agency or whatever, is a place where the woman can go where she knows that no one is going to know where she is. And that's why it's important for the secrecy to be kept as far as her leaving. The main thing that I tell women, Diane, if you are planning to leave your abuser, never tell him that you are planning on leaving. I know. Most women are killed are injured seriously when they let that abuser know that they're going to leave. It's a total no-no. 
you set a plan, you make good plans as to how you're going to make that escape because the word of God said that he would make a way of escape. Mm -hmm. So there is a way to do it safely that you and your children are not in harm's way. Mm -hmm. I remember a movie and I can't remember the name of the movie now mm -hmm. where the woman had a little girl and her husband was very abusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She ended up actually going back and I'm not into the killing stuff, but she, uh, that, yeah. that was mm -hmm. that movie. You remember uh, it? Yeah, I don't remember the name <coughs> of it, <coughs> but uh, I think it was called Enough. I, it might have been. I think it was called Enough. And see, that's where we don't want to get, to no. the place where women are saying, you know what, enough. And I do prison ministry as well. I cannot tell you how many, the, the last time I was at a female facility, there was a woman there in her 70s that her husband, she had the mark on her body where he had cut her, beaten her. Oh. And finally, one day, she was like, okay, I cannot take this anymore. He had beaten her, went to bed drunk, and she just got the gun out of the, and, and killed him. We don't want to see those type of That's scenarios. That's right. That's right. But when someone gets enough is enough, either he's going to take your life or you'll end up taking his life. And we don't want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. We want to take measures now to safely transition out of those situations. Right after the first of the year, you lost a friend, and then he killed himself. Actually, shot his mother-in-law. Is that he correct? He shot my my the friend was my was the mother. She was my, we I were gotcha. childhood friends. Okay. And she was shot twice. Her daughter screamed for her saying that he had a gun. The guy had a gun. The mother ran out of the room and said, no, you are not going to, you know, you're not going to hurt my daughter. He shot the mother two times, went, ran behind the girl, shot her two times, killed her, and then took the gun and killed himself. This was the second time in two and a half years, Diane, that I have personally had friends that lost children because of domestic violence. The one in 2009, the, the young guy, she, he was 31, she was 27. He shot her and four times in front of their two children, came into the hallway in Georgia, in Lithonia, Georgia, and killed himself with the children present. The young lady that just died uh, December 30th, is when she was killed. She was 21. Oh the young man goodness. was 23. And she so, had a child. Yes, she? yes, she did. And at the home going, this baby screamed and hollered for her mother. And I am just sick and tired of seeing that scenario played out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We got to do something. Yeah. We've got to do something. And bringing awareness through programs like yours is what is going to make the difference. And so they can contact you mm -hmm. uh, if if any of you in, in the viewing audience want more information yes. on even maybe areas, I'm sure you know how to connect people throughout to, the state. Yes, and yes. so you can call Cassandra at 770-899-7424 and we'll have that posted at the bottom of your screen too in a, in a website or an email address mm -hmm. where you can contact her if you feel like you need to. Sometimes people want to reach out and don't want you to know who they are to start with. Anonymity is fine. That's right. All we want to do is reach you and if you need information, we supply information. If you need prayer, we supply prayer. If you need counseling, we can supply counseling. So whatever it is that you need, but the bottom line is to realize that you are even a friend. Everybody knows someone that is being abused. Yes. Sometimes you don't realize it, but everybody knows someone that's being abused. And usually an abuser will separate uh, your loved one. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's your loved one mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're in an mm -hmm. abuse situation. Mm -hmm. They will separate mm -hmm. that person from mm -hmm. their family, mm -hmm. kind of pull them away. Yes. Jealousy. Yes. And you know, one of the things that, I, and we didn't even talk about this last evening when mm -hmm. we were sharing, uh, but I learned a few years back, mm -hmm. and and I, I was raised, saved in a Baptist church, mm -hmm, love mm -hmm. the Baptist people, mm -hmm. and they know that here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I began to learn some things, that, and this television program has really stretched me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the Lord has taught me a lot. I've yes. learned a lot. Like you said, mm -hmm. there are no denominations. Yes. There should not no. be any, and, we, no. and I know all of that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I went through a teaching about three years ago where I really became uh, aware, you know, the Bible talks about we, we don't fight flesh and blood. No. We're fighting principalities no. and rulers no. of darkness. And, and the level that they came to me in this teaching was that these spirits, you see, that's an evil spirit that's possessing that person. Exactly. It's not the person. We look no, at the, the person, person and say, the person's bad. Yeah. 
What's happened is yeah. that spirit, spirit is controlling that mm -hmm. that flesh. Exactly. And exactly. that and that spirit. Let's just say it's a a, a spirit of um, I don't know violence. I guess. Yeah. yeah. The only way that spirit can, and I didn't understand this. It only can express itself when it gets expression through a human being. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I've never thought about exactly. that. Exactly. That's what spirits do. They roam. If they find a place that's open to them, that's where they dwell. And, and all they know is that. That's it. That's For example, it. if that's a spirit it. of a lying spirit, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. it can do is lie. It's lying. That's all it knows. And it gets gratification when it finally gets yes. your flesh to lie. Mm -hmm. That's when it gets gratification. Exactly. And exactly. I think it really came home to me when I was thinking about that spirit of adultery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you think about that. Oh, when you take yeah. it to that level, mm -hmm. that spirit of adultery, mm -hmm. that spirit gets a little bit of relief. Yes. Just that one moment yes. when you commit adultery, it. it gets to express itself exactly. for that one moment. Exactly. And then it has to wait for somebody else to be it's willing to express to itself. It. Exactly. And so this violent spirit, mm -hmm. and I don't even know if that's the right word mm -hmm. uh, to call this mm -hmm. spirit, but this spirit of violence mm -hmm. or manipulation. Manipulation and control. That's what it's it is. It's actually a spirit of manipulation and okay. control. Okay, yeah. And that is the main uh, tool that an abuser uses. If, if that person can get you under the, uh, first of all, it takes manipulation to get you under control. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So they're very loving and coming in most times. That's why women don't pick it up at the beginning most of the time because they're not going to come in gangbuster. Hey, you're going to do what I say and you're not going to. That's not how they come. It's very loving and kind and, you know, let's do a dinner, let's do a movie, you know, you're so pretty, you're wonderful, and as you get caught up in it, slowly, as that person is beginning to use the spirit of manipulation, which you don't even realize at first, the next thing you know, why are you going out with your friends? Why are you talking to your mother so much? What's wrong with you? You're going to do what I say. What? You're not going to go out tonight. No, you're not. That is how easily a person can get caught up in it before they even realize. And they don't make that move until they know they have you. That's right. That, and women with the, you know, I love him. I wrote a play called But I Love Him. And in that play, there were 12 women from different backgrounds, white, black, Hispanic, young, old. Everybody was being uh, abused. But they all at the end said this thing that I've heard over 20 years of doing this type of ministry but I love him. Oh, wow. I have a black eye. I can't see my friends, can't talk to my family, but I love him. And until we can realize that God never intends for that to be love, that's not love. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is for you, it's not love because love does not hurt. It's not envious. It's, it's not patient. boastful. It's patient. It's kind. It's long suffering. Come on now, <laughs> long suffering. So that means that even if you push his button, he does not have a right to abuse you. Yes. He yes. does not have a right to abuse you. And according to the word of God, and that's our that's our guideline, we do not operate in that type of a spirit when you say that you love God. Agape is not like that. Mm -mm. It's not like that. No, mm -hmm. no. This is so powerful. It's mm -hmm. such a powerful subject today. It really is. And, and we need to uh, pray uh, over the families that mm -hmm. are even going through abuse. I mean, mm -hmm. children are abused. Children. Mm -hmm. We know that Very there's child so. abuse. Uh, I recently so. saw on a Dr. Phil program mm -hmm. where a child had been locked away for years, mm -hmm. years in mm -hmm. a closet mm -hmm. and uh, left there. And her mother picked her out of mm -hmm. all children mm -hmm. to, to, to do that to. Mm -hmm. I, my mind... It's hard to think, but see, there's that spirit, spirit again. All over again. You we're know, and we don't spirit. believe. A lot of times, I don't, and when I say this, I'm not saying it in a, I'm just being opened up mm -hmm. to this. These spirits, what we need to understand is when the angel, when the devil, the Bible teaches very clearly, when mm -hmm. Satan was cast mm -hmm. out of heaven, a third mm -hmm. of the angels a came with him. With mm -hmm. Those spirits have been there. It's the same spirits that were there years thousands of years ago exactly. don't you think they know your family heritage <laughs> it's called a familiar spirit absolutely and the reason we call it a familiar you a familiar spirit knows all about your great great grandmama what she did your your uncle everybody so and then even your past the things that you've done absolutely. that even that nobody else may know those spirits know and that is how they come back around to present that thing to you again and that's how a lot of times we get caught up in mess yeah. because he brings back something from your past 
by your family's past, the spirit of whoredom. Yep. You meet families where all of the women are loose. That's a spirit. Alcoholism, drug addiction, all of these things are passed down through spirit. Well, he says that even. It can go down to a thousand generations, generations of exactly. that's a curse. That's exactly. a generational, generational curse. curse. Exactly. And so it's very dangerous. Yes. You yes. know, third and fourth generation. I think the thousand generations is for, for I, us. Yeah, the good, that's the good part. I'm sorry, that I mixed it up. Part. Yeah, to but a thousand generations. That's right, to a thousand, those that do well yes. And, yes. And, and seek the Lord. Yes. And, and ask. But we have the power yes. to stop. The heads of our homes have yes. the power to stop this stuff yes. from pri prior generations exactly. too. We exactly. do have that authority. We As a child of God, mm -hmm. we have the authority to mm -hmm. stop that, mm -hmm. to bind it, and mm -hmm. to stop it. That's it. That's you know. It. That's it. And then we need to go back and look in our own lives and say, Lord, have I opened up anything? And the Holy Spirit will show yes. us. Yes. And he is such a teacher. It's sometimes we have opened ourselves up. My mother was abused. I watched her being abused as a child. We would actually have the state patrol at that time would come to our house when there was a domestic violence situation. They would load me and my siblings in the car, in their car, take us to the county line. A city policeman would pick us up and take us to our grandmother's house. This was like a almost a regular occurrence in my household because of domestic violence. And one time, me and my sister, my mother was being beaten by our stepfather. We ran up the steps. We grabbed knives out of the kitchen as children. I was 11. She was 10. And we went upstairs, and it was like, enough is enough. We're going to kill this man for touching our mother. You never want to put your children in a situation where they feel like they have to defend you. It is our job to protect our children. And when we are in domestic violence and we are allowing that that spirit to control the household and our children are seeing that, you don't know what position you may be putting your children in, whether for them to be hurt or for them to act as aggressors, become aggressors and go after the person that's hurting you. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. So your ministry is birthed out of your own pain. And my own pain. My own and so pain. you know what you're dealing with. Exactly. And so that's very important to me. Very important. You know, when yeah. when, you, when you've dealt with it yourself, mm -hmm. and again, from a child's perspective, yes. Yes. Uh, when you look at those children, mm -hmm. uh, the compassion of Christ mm -hmm. that can come through you, yes. I'm fully convinced, mm -hmm. not that God wants us to sin, mm -hmm. uh, we do, mm -hmm. just because we <laughs> we're born in mm -hmm. this fallen world. Mm -hmm. But in, in those places of brokenness, mm -hmm. I've always said, yes. those are the areas you're more like Christ than any, any other any place other, in your life. Exactly. Because you've experienced exactly. it. Exactly. And you've seen the redemption of God come into those places yes. and, and heal those broken places. I've experienced that through my own divorce. Yes. And so when you do, that, the compassion, yes. the understanding yes. that, that comes through yes. that is yes. just, uh, it's God. Yes, exactly. My ex-husband um, beat, beat me so bad one time that he almost killed me. I ended up in the hospital in an intensive care unit for several days. Uh, so yours was generational. Yes, yes, it came through generational. And then uh, he, one day, I, when I, this is why I tell women, I know firsthand, you don't tell them you're leaving. I sat down with him one night and I said, listen, we're having some issues right now. I think it's best for me and the children if we leave for some time and just give you some time to yourself, to get yourself together. Now, I th I'm thinking as a Christian, I'm doing the right thing because I'm going to give him some time. I'm not talking about divorce. I'm talking about just some time for him to get himself together. So he said, you know, yeah, that might be a good idea. So we went to bed that night. The next morning, I got up getting ready for work, got dressed. I'm going down the steps of our home to go to work. As I got down to the middle step, I heard him come out of the bedroom. I didn't pay any attention. I looked back and, you know, I smiled. And he started coming down the steps behind me. When I got to the middle of the stairway, I felt this, you know, tug on my, I turned and he punched me. Oh and my. this guy was huge. My ex-husband was huge and I was very small at that time. I hit the wall and started sliding down the wall. I, I was losing consciousness and I'm like, you know, shaking myself, trying to get myself together, and I'm trying to I can't push imagine. myself up. And as I did that, pow, he hit me again in the face, and my eye just burst open. Blood just started 
flying everywhere. And I heard in my spirit, if you don't do something, if he hits you again, he'll kill you. And my daughter came out of her room screaming, and she grabbed his arm as he was going back to hit me again, even as I was bleeding and sliding down the wall. And she stopped him, and he sort of came to himself. But what I'm saying is, don't let the abuser know any plans that you have. That could have meant my death that day. But God let me Amen. live so that I would be able to tell somebody yes. else what not to do. There are procedures that you need to take if you want to get out of an abusive relationship. And you can help those that are watching the program. Listen, this isn't a pro-divorce program today. That's it. I want you to understand. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely I, not. People come to me because I've gone, you know, been through that yeah. in my life. Yeah. And uh, I will not encourage no. anybody to no. ever no. Uh, get a divorce. No. I, you know, no. that's not... I want you to seek the Lord and That's both it. of you try to try be to healed. Exactly. And even in an abusive situation, there may be that time, like you said, if there's real love there and, mm -hmm. and maybe he's got some yeah. issues or yeah. she's got some issues yeah. that could be, if they're willing. Redemption, redemption is, is what we, and restoration is what we want to do with families. But that person has to realize that they need help. That's exactly right. If you right. keep saying it ain't nothing wrong with me and you're beating your wife and you're mi abusing your children, no, there is something wrong with you. That is not normal and that is definitely not godly. So then we have to take a stand in the body of Christ and say no more, no more. Either you're going to get some help or your family is going to remove themselves until you decide you want to get help because women cannot stay in abusive especially physically abusive situations yeah. because you never know when that thing is going to become fatal that's right it may become fatal at the very moment you think oh he's just gonna you know he's just gonna slap me around well what about this time he punches you you hit the table and and crack your skull you, you understand you never know what what turn domestic violence is going to take and we don't want to see women continuing to die and be hurt because of domestic violence that's right we don't want it we need to stop it let me ask you this and i and and i didn't talk to you about this before but do you have a story a good story a good that story. you would like to share through your ministry that you, you've seen God's hand and even the restoration. Is, is there any? I, there, I've seen a few because usually abusers, they like the way they are and they don't think there's anything wrong. If I don't think that there's anything wrong with me, I'm not going to try to change. You're right. I, I'm, I'm really not going to try to change. And I'm sitting here and I've done this for over 20 years. I cannot think right now of an abuser that got help and got himself really? together. That's a powerful we spirit. We know that God can do that. I know. Yeah, but it's like the spirit of, of a strong spirit of addiction. People can be in addiction for 20, 30 years and, and never, never change. So most of the abusers that I know, they did not change. They wanted to continue that control and manipulation that they had over those women. They wanted to continue. Now, I know some great stories about women that left and God blessed them with awesome men of God. And that's I wonderful. know that one. That that one I do know firsthand because I have a friend, uh, the Dr. Melinda Bell, that she has a ministry called Out of Bondage. And when she left her husband, who tried to kill her? And, and she said, okay, God, this is it. I got to get my children out of here. And she left, and she is married to an awesome pastor, Pastor Bell, awesome man of God. So I know that God can. You don't, I'm going to leave it at this. We don't, we're not pro-divorce, but don't stay there and get whipped. That's right. Don't stay there and continue to get whipped. That's right. So I am definitely not pro-divorce, but if he doesn't want to get you. help, you need to do something That's to right. spare you and your children. That's right. Because another statistic, Diane, and this is very sad to me, most children that grow up in abused relationships and grew abused households, they marry. Households, they end up marrying abusive. The girls end up marrying abusers despite what they saw. And That's what happened to you. End up, yes. And the boys end up being abusers. Even though they saw their mother being beaten, many of them end up being abusers. So, okay, you don't want to think about yourself. Think about your children. 
Well, and if we think about it, all statistics, when, when we, we, we hear the statistics about raising children, mm -hmm. the first five years of their life, mm -hmm. is the that's Four, where yes, the yes. whole handprint, all that's established mm -hmm. in their behavior mm -hmm. uh, and everything mm -hmm. by that age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time, mm -hmm. I would imagine there's probably a couple of three kids in that, yes. you know, little bitty mm -hmm. time frame there where they Very have learned so. all that. They've already got the behavior, in the, yes, which you did. And, and they're they and they are usually very um uh they're usually this they're usually very I don't want to say pushy children but but very aggressive children. Many times they're very aggressive, and uh, I taught school right. I taught kindergarten and first grade. And that's one thing that I saw so much with children that were in, that we knew that were in abusive households. They were extremely aggressive children, extroverted children, or either they were extremely introverted children. You, you talk loud and they jump. Yeah. No child should have to live like that. Well, we've only got about 10 minutes mm -hmm. left. Can you believe mm -hmm. how quick 30 wow. minutes goes? Yes. What would you like to say before we close the program? We've got just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yeah, I would like to say, please, if you know someone and you do know someone that's in that situation or if you yourself are in that situation, please seek help. Your pastor, a friend, a counselor, you need to talk to somebody at least that they would know what's going on with you don't just sit in silence and continue to be abused because we have to stop the cycle of abuse especially here in the state of georgia yes well i'm so glad that you came cassandra I enjoyed it so thank much, you Diane. so thank much you. and i pray that if you do have uh that issue going on in your family or maybe you know someone that that uh whether it's a friend or whatever uh, get them to watch this program this week. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll re-air a couple of times, and we have those times uh, on our website, on our on our Facebook page, or you can call me at 770-309-8635, and I'll be glad to get you those times. We need to get this information out, but you can go uh, and call Cassandra at 770-899-7424, uh, and you can also go to www.god.com at yahoo.com which exactly. is your email address yes. and email her and uh, maybe you know y'all could get together and talk exactly. about the situation exactly. just know this that Christ died for you he came over 2,000 years ago and gave his life shed his blood for all of us at Calvary so that we could our sins could be covered I've been doing a study this year in the uh, we're walking through the Bible mm. and just to think all the sacrifices they had to do back yes, in the Old Testament yes. but my Jesus Christ did it all for me at Calvary and mm. all I have to do is simply ask him to come into my heart and so if that's where you are today I know I'm a sinner I know I need a Savior and God I believe that Jesus Christ is yes. is the one and only Savior yes. you call on his name and he'll come into your life and at that birth I promise you everything that he created you to be you have the power now. The only way you can let uh, yourself become who you're supposed to be is to have Christ inside of you, the hope of glory, mm -hmm. to give you that power that you um, need to become everything he sent you here to be. Mm -hmm. And so God wants to do that for you today. If you've made that decision, call me at 770-309-8635, and I'll rejoice with you and maybe get you plugged into a local church mm -hmm. so you can get to studying and Amen. knowing everything Amen. that God has for your life. Amen. He loves you so much. Don't you believe the lies of the enemy that you don't have a purpose? you got a big purpose. Remember, Christ in you is truly the hope of glory. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Thank you.